Yasuke, the first black man in Japan. Thomas Lockley on Yasuke's origins. Pinpointing Yasuke's origins in Africa is difficult. A secondary source, Salaguer, who wrote about Yasuke in the 1620s, stated that Yasuke was from Mozambique. There was no other evidence for this, and no prior source mentions. The tribe in the immediate vicinity of the Portuguese occupied island of Mozambique were called the Makua, a relatively peaceful agricultural people who had only migrated to the region in the 1570s until circa 1585. Long after Yasuke had left, they managed a relatively conflict free coexistence with Europeans. While there were probably a few Makua slaves at Yasuke's time, the record is unclear and the peaceful nature of relations makes it less likely that he was a Makua, as slaves would be more likely to have come from a people unfriendly to the Portuguese. The possibility that he was sold because his family was in dire straits and he was an unneeded mouth to feed also exists. There were several families during, there were several famines during the decade. But a family would normally sell a young child, not a strong young man. Another problem with this theory is that slaves preferred children. Slaves were preferred as children because they were easier to control and manipulate. Yasuke would have been 18 or 19 when Villanano passed through Mozambique late in the day to be enslaved. Finally, the Maku had a very distinctive culture of filing teeth in the points. This surely would have been a remarkable fact to the Japanese at the time and would probably have been mentioned. It is not. One final problem with the Mozambique origin story is that the Portuguese slaves trade in Mozambique was relatively small at the time. Only around 200 to 500 people a year were forcibly transported to India. Between 1500 and 1850, the total number of enslaved people transported to India ocean destinations from Mozambique is estimated to have been between 40,000 and 80,000. The Arab, Jewish, Gorantani, and Turkish slave trade from Northeast Africa, by contrast, was far larger, and over the course of the history, an estimated 11 to 14 million Northeast African people were sold. And then there is the height and extremely dark skin. Neither are characteristic of the peoples of the Mozambique region, who generally smaller and have lighter colored skin. But the north of Africa integrated into the Indian Ocean slave trade provides the people who sound far more like our description of Yasuke, the Dinka for example, from what is now known as the world's youngest state, South Sudan, are famously on average the tallest people in the world. They are also strong warriors who hold themselves well and are much darker skinned, all things said of Yasuke, than their neighbors in modern day Ethiopia, Entria, or Somalia. The Dinko are cow herders and fierce warriors who in the days live slightly farther north of the current lands in the banks of the Nile. They partake of distinctive fake shoal scarring upon reaching adulthood, but Yasuke would probably have been taken before his coming of age rituals therefore lacked these features. Slave raiders from what is now Northern Sudan also raided the Dinka people at this time. The Dinka people only got their modern name in the 19th century, probably after being randomly assigned by a British explorer or administrator. They called themselves the Zhang. Through a process of elimination, I have concluded that Yasuke was a member of the Zhang. And Okay, uh, readers note, that's not far-fetched. He could be Dinka. Um, 6'2", by African standards, is not that tall. I mean, you could have the people who are relatively five foot nine, five foot ten, and then pop up a six two guy in Africa. So he could be from Mozambique, he could be Dinka anywhere around the region. We don't really know, but he was probably taken as a slave as a young boy and then raised to be a slave soldier. Um, let's get into that pretty quick. The Arab slave trade on the time. Um the Arabs, this is a, another video, I've done a few, maybe I'll do another few on the Arab slave trade in the future. Um, but it was completely rapid from the time of Islam and the dying of the Prophet and then pushing out the Arabs into Africa uh, from the 700s on up till today. It was just, they were the main initiators of the African slave trade or gearing it up in the process. Um, some things on this. Louis Veros, a Jesuit priest, wrote of Yasuke as a coffer, slave in the Arabic. Grisad states that Yasuke was a servant brought from India with Alessandro Villanados came to Japan. But most likely he converted to Islam 
and was sent to the Caliphates of India. It is not known, however, whether Yasuki was enslaved or free at the time. Most likely, he was already educated in war because he was Villanueva's bodyguard, purchased for just this weird reason. Um, most likely, Yasuke was a Hibishi, and that is slave children, slave children raised to be warriors in Muslim armies. Um, Thomas Lockley on this very point. Habshi, slave soldiers, essentially became members of mercenary bands. The commanders were senior African generals who had risen through the ranks to become men of wealth and power. It was they who brought the slave boys in the market and schooled their new recruits in the deadly arts. The training endured by the newly bought Hebshi slave soldiers was brutal. The young men, as with child soldiers today, forced to kill and maim to become inured in the deeds that they had to soon carry out. This inoculated a fierce loyalty to the generals, their employers, and to each other. As outsiders in a foreign land, they had few other ties and perhaps for Yasuke, becoming Hebshi would have given him a sense of brotherhood and belonging. After the long and probable terrifying period of his life's post-capture, he would finally have left secure again with comrades, friends and family and of sorts. Military slaves were normally paid a salary, fed and clothed. They also had enjoyed spoils of war and generous bonuses, which boasted their loyalty further. Slaves were freed on their master's death following Islamic tradition, so many did not feel that slavery was a life sentence. They had a future beyond servitude. If they survived, many Habshi mercenaries are recorded as having been in Portuguese service. For example, 600 formed a def defensive force in a constantly beleaguered Portuguese fort of Du, 180 miles north of Mumbai and many others worked as sailors on Portuguese ships. End.